Google Maps for Symbian and Windows Mobile just got updated to version 3.3 with direct syncing support for your starred places to the full web version, of course. In addition, on the first sync on Nokia phones, your Ovi Maps favorites also get uploaded. You can get version 3.3 by going to m.google.com in web on your phone. More quarter three 2009 phone sales figures have appeared, this time from IDC, and looking purely at the Western Europe market. In summary, the whole market grew 5% year on year. Smartphone sales weren't quite as strong, interestingly, with touchscreens now making their way into the traditional feature phone space. Nokia is still the market leader at 35%, down 1%. Samsung in second at 31%, with LG and Sony Ericsson way back at 11% and 10% respectively. Apple has 4% and RIM 3, an order of magnitude back from the market leaders, while HTC is firmly back in the noise. It shows how far smartphones have got to go. The Sony Ericsson Satio has received its first public firmware update, and it's a biggie, to version R1C from R1B, which was released via Sony Ericsson Update Service. There's no over-the-air updating here. It addresses a litany of stability issues, including non-responsive touchscreen, media, playback freezes, subpar speaker sound, and erratic camera. A Satio review is coming from me soon, when I'm happy the device is stable. Samsung has formally launched its new Bada smartphone platform. I was at the event, and as far as I understand it, it's more smartphone-like extensions to its existing SHP feature phone OS, but I'll reserve judgment until devices start appearing in 2010. Hi Steve, my name is Raphael, I live in the south of France, and the phone I'm really enjoying right now is the white Nokia N86 8 megapixel. Uh, the phone is absolutely gorgeous in white and I really love it because it feels like a big upgrade of my previous phone, the N95 Classic. Uh, I really enjoy using this phone because uh, the T9 keys are well spaced, they are perfect for short messaging or Twitter for example. Uh, the multimedia keys allow me to change your music uh, easily while driving and the D-pad is great for gaming or web navigation because there are no buttons around it so I'm not afraid to use it anymore. Uh, impressive Carl Zeiss optic and very good build quality. Uh, it has fallen from my pocket at least uh, 30 times uh, since I have it and there are no scratch on it. Very, very, very impressive phone. Thank you. One of the biggest topics in the mobile world in recent months has been the bashing of Symbian on various websites, usually US-based. Seemingly branding Symbian as a fuddy-duddy has been progressively being left behind by newcomers to the smartphone scene. So with camera phones in hand, I headed for Symbian Foundation's London HQ to talk about Symbian's future and to give Executive Director Lee Williams the right of reply. Yes, we're definitely ahead of schedule and we're, we're proud of it. Some teams have been working very hard um, to get everything, you know, a full distribution migrated completely to EPL, yeah. uh, which is the open source uh, license we leverage. Um, so the microkernel was released. You pointed that out. You saw mm -hmm. that, that notice. Um, more than that, um, you, you know, we're ahead of schedule in terms of the number of packages uh, that we're moving over yeah. to that EPL. So I think by Mobile World Congress, you'll hear some exciting announcements from us in this regard. So Symbian 3 and Symbian 4 are still on track? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, uh, well on track, well underway. And uh, as you may have heard me mention before, there are some 460 plus features and new levels of functionality being checked yeah. into the source systems. There are these, and what has been your reaction to the over-eager mm. predicted demise of your yeah, organization? There's absolutely no <laughs> truth in these. I, you know, we have a tremendous amount of momentum. Yeah. Um, that's the fact. Uh, and you can look no further than the Qualcomm announcements. Some uh, great projects underway with Qualcomm in this regard that opens up whole new avenues for us. Same with Fujitsu. You know, the Japanese companies are very interested in being global with yeah. their product initiatives, so not uh, restricting the great things they do with Symbian simply to the Japan or Japanese marketplace. Um, when you look at what Nokia is doing, I, I think Nokia has been crystal clear on both their level of dependency of uh, and their excitement of what I'll call the technology legs uh, that is behind a Symbian platform. Yeah. Um, they're investing, they continue to invest heavily. If you were to look at a, a level of effort uh, as, as an investment, you would see that Nokia uh, and others are investing more than they were last year or the year before uh, mm -hmm. into product development uh, efforts for these things. So I, I think things have been greatly overblown 
in the in the press and marketplace. The press loves a sensationalist story from time to time, yeah. uh, with all due respect. Well, I hope I don't bash Symbian too much. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen any any bashing, <laughs> just constructive uh, comments. So, but I, you know, that said, um, I also think Kai Oistemo and uh, Ole Pekka Kaluso yeah. uh, have come out recently and been uh, even more clear um, that uh, you, you know the future of smartphones uh, for the masses, uh, for the world, and where the real growth opportunity lies is with the Symbian platform. Yeah. So I, I think you'll continue to see and hear announcements about those things as we as we move fully to open source. I think people just like bashing the old guard. They want the new, in with the new. And what I think they're not perhaps appreciating is that the Symbian Foundation is a reinvention and is effectively the new guard as well as the old guard. That's correct. <laughs> that's, that's, you, you've nailed it. And that's exactly what we're doing with our movement. That's why I call it a movement. It's a movement of new guard to take a de facto technology standard in completely new directions. And we've only scratched the surface of what consumers will see in terms of new products, new services that are a result of us, us doing these things. Yeah, I, th I think we should address it. I, usability is a very important focus point for us. Um, we've, we've hired some of the industry's best to come in and help lead our UI councils and to provide some intellectual leadership, capability and capacity for those out there that are building Symbian products. So this is having a direct influence on how we prioritize and whether or not we gain contributions from other companies um, that help us improve that UI and improve the overall usability. I actually don't think we have a problem with our UI today at all. And I don't think it's legacy. I think those are naive views uh, shared by some in the industry. Um, what we have is the world's best and most widely used, what I would call scroll and select or focused UI. Yeah. We have that in the, in the products today. Uh, the challenge for us is that we're going to direct UI manipulation paradigms. We're leveraging from a developer standpoint what are called declarative UI concepts and technologies. We're incorporating the Qt core technologies, which are very advanced, into the system. Um, when you combine all of that with that focus on usability, uh, and the strength of the talent we have dedicated to this in the member companies and in the foundation itself, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised um, by what we're able to do with it. I, you see some good examples today, you, you know, in the Satyo. Uh, you see some very good examples of that today in some of the Nokia products that have come out, like the X6 uh, and others, and we're just going to keep marching on. Oh, I, I, we're not worried at all. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't be concerned about whether or not we can be overtaken. That's not what we focus on. We don't always focus on our market share and so forth. Yeah. Where we do have issues is that we look at the health of our ecosystem. We, we focus on making sure companies can provide uh, a definitive return on their investments. And when you compare our ecosystem and that opportunity to what is available in an Android-based ecosystem, um, I think it's clear you have a better opportunity with us and that will remain the case. Uh, for some time. Yeah, I, I think um, where people are focused is still producing um, products that make um, really good phone calls. I mean, I, I think people underestimate the level of effort that goes into, as an example, ensuring you have solid antenna, uh, uh, you know, frequencies and ratios and, and uh, you know, dealing with all the interface uh, and interference issues on the products. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I continue to look at something like an iPhone with a great big display perfect for gaming, uh, good for some internet browsing, yeah. um, and it also makes phone calls on some operator networks from time to time. In some areas. Yeah, in some areas. <laughs> but it, you know, the, there's a difference. When you look at the Symbian products, it's the other way around. And yeah. so will gaming become increasingly or more important moving forward? It certainly will. When you, when you get a lot of those Symbian products out there with that same big display and you get that hardware accelerated graphics system in there, um, it, it, naturally games are going to come with it. Uh, I keep recommending people buy a, a top-end Symbian smartphone with perhaps something like the E72 uh, and an iPod Touch, and between mm. the two you've got the best of both worlds. It, it, it really <laughs> is the best of both worlds. I, I just ran into a venture capitalist uh, and on the plane when I, when I was traveling back from the States from, for Thanksgiving, and uh, that was his setup. I really liked the rig, I told him. Um, and, and he, he didn't, uh, said he couldn't do business on an iPhone, said he couldn't mm. do business on a Blackberry, he just got too frustrated. And uh, that was his exact setup, that touch with a, with a, with a 71 and now a 72. So uh, I think a lot of people have come to the same conclusion. Uh, we're doing an awful lot. In fact, uh, uh, members of the, the leadership team uh, are measured uh, by their performance against certain uh, percentages or targets of packages that would be non-Nokia contributions. 
Um, more than that, this is what's different than us versus a lot of other open source initiatives or a lot of other foundations that are out there. I mean, we're, we're on the phones, we're on email, we're in meetings, we're traveling the world uh, seeking contribution. Uh, sharing ideas with others, forming mm -hmm. alliances with with teams, so that they can introduce these types of developments into the platform. Um, so if we if we keep up the momentum here, I think it will be like a, a snowball rolling downhill. You'll start to see some things in the platform that no one company could have done or could have contributed on their own. This E seventy two, I'm really enjoying. Okay, uh, it's a great improvement with the new five megapixel camera, yeah. um, and also have a, a Satio. Um, I typically use a device for a week or two and then move on to another prototype or something. But the, the Satio really has my attention. The 12 megapixel camera, some of the, the graphics features, uh, and of course all the multitasking capability yeah. um, is here on that, on that TI platform. So I've been very happy with it. Okay.